So now the first rule of root locus is that the root locus starts at the poles of the systems. That's where that's where k is zero. The roots will be at the poles of the system or the poles of the open loop transmitters GH. And when k is infinity, the roots will be at the zeros of the system, the zeros of the GH, the open loop transmitters. Now let's move on to try to find other rules. Now suppose that we have a system with poles and zeros on the real axis. Let's put random poles and zeros. Let's say pole one, pole two, a zero, a pole, a zero, a zero. Okay, now definitely there should be roots on the real axis because the root locus starts at the poles and at the, the zeros. So it will start somewhere on this pole or on this pole or on this pole. It will be on the real axis and then it might continue on the real axis or depart from the real axis but there should be roots on the real axis because the poles and zeros are on the real axis. So let's see where on the real axis we will have roots and where we will not have roots. So let me divide this axis, the real axis, into uh, several segments. Let's say this is segment one, two, and three, four, Six and segment seven to infinity, and segment one actually goes to infinity. Now let's call this P one, pole two, zero one, pole three, zero two, zero three. Now Let's put a test point in segment one. So this is segment one. Test point. Now the angle criteria, let's call this S1. Test point S1. The angle criteria says that the sum of angles of zeros minus the sum of angles of poles is 180 degrees plus minus K360. Now, for S1, let's start from the zeros and go to S1. From 0, 1 to S1, we have this vector, and the angle of this vector is zero. So we have a zero plus from 0, 2 to test S1, that's also uh, a vector with an angle of zero plus from 0, 3 to test 1, that's also another 0. That concludes all the zeros. Minus for the poles, P1 to S1, that's 0. P2 to S2, that's another 0 uh, angle vector. And from pole 3 going to S1, the vector also has an angle of 0. So we we'll have 0 plus 0 plus zero and that is not equal to 180 degrees that's zero basically so that means test point one uh, can never be a root of a system 
because it does not satisfy the angle criteria. So just point one and all similar points on the real axis, as long as they are to the right of P1, they don't satisfy the uh, angle criteria. So in segment one, no roots. So that means no roots. Let's move to segment two. Test point two. Test two. And let's place a test point between um, P1 and P2 and apply the angle criteria start from 0, 1, 2 S2 the angle of the vector is 0 from 0, 2 to S2 again going to the right the angle is 0 and from 0, 3 to S2, the angle is also 0. So we have 0 plus 0 plus 0 minus. Let's go for the poles. P1 to S2. Now the vector starts at P1 going to S2, goes to the left, and the angle is 180 degrees. So going from P1 to S2, the angle is 180 degrees. From P2 to S2, P, S2 is to the right of P2, the vector has an angle of 0. From P3 to S2, also the angle is 0. So that's plus 0 plus 0 equals 0 minus 180 degrees and minus 180 degrees is basically 180 degrees minus 360 or 180 or minus 180 both are equal angles minus 180 degrees so this means that the angle criteria is satisfied and we have roots so here, in segment 2, we have roots anywhere between P1 and P2. Now let's go to segment 3. Test point S3. Now for test point S3, the angles of the zeros from 0, 1 to test 3, that's a vector to the right, so the angle is 0, from 0, 2 to test 3, another to the right, another vector to the right from 0, 3 to test 3, and that is three zeros, 0 plus 0 plus 0 minus from pole 1 to test point 3 the angle is 180 that's a vector to the left so the angle is 180 from pole 2 angle 180 to the left and from pole 3 a vector to the right so that's the, the angle is 0 so we have angle 180 degrees for pole 1, 180 degrees for pole 2, and 0 for pole 3. The total here is negative 360 degrees, and that is not equal to 180 degrees or any of its derivatives, so this is not equal to 180 degrees. And that means that we have no roots. 
for point S3 or any point in between P1, P2 and Z1. So here we have no roots. Now let's go to segment four. S4 for test point. This is S4. Start from the zeros. 0, 1 to S4, a vector to the left, so that's 180 degrees. From 0, 2 to S4, a vector to the right, so that's 0 degrees. 0, 3 to S4, to the right, so that's another 0. So plus 0, plus 0, for 0, 2 and 3, minus start the poles from p1 to s4 that's a vector to the left so that's 180 degrees from p2 to s4 another vector to the left so that's 180 degrees and from p3 to s4 that's a vector to the right so the angle is zero 180 minus 180, 0 plus 180, that's 180 degrees. So 180 degrees, that means we have roots. Okay. So segment 4, we have roots. Any point between 0, 1 and pole 3, all these have possible uh, root locations. Now, uh, let's do segment 5 or S5 and let's just write S5 here. For S5, for zeros, 0, 1 to S5, that's a vector to the left, so that's 180 degrees. From 0, 2 to S5, to the right, so that's 0, 0, 3 to S5, a vector to the right, that's another 0, so 0 plus 0 minus, let's count the poles, P1 to S5, a vector to the left, so that's 180 degrees, P2 to S5, another vector to the left, so that's another 180 degrees, and P3 to 5 is also a vector to the left, so that's another 180 degrees. And that's 180 minus 180, that's 0 plus 360. And 360 is not 180 degrees, so that means we have no roots. So here in segment 5, we have no roots. For S6, test point in segment 6, and let's start from 0, 1 to S6, that's a vector to the left, from 0, 2 to S6, another vector to the left, so we have 180 plus 180 plus from 0, 3 to S6, the vector is to the right, so the angle is 0, Let's go for the poles, here's S6, here's P1 to S6 to the left, 180, P2 to S6 to the left, 180, and P3 to S6 also to the left, so that's another 180 degrees. 
So we have 180 plus 180 plus 180. And that's equal. 180, 180 minus 180 minus 180, that's zero, and I end up with 180 degrees, which means we have possible roots. So in segment six, the points on the real axis could be roots on the rear, uh, on the root locus. Finally, for segment seven, Put the test point here, S7. And now S7 is to the left of all balls and zeros. So the, all the angles go to the left 180 degrees. So I don't even have to look at the locations there. It's just 180 for each ball and each zero. Minus 180 plus 180 plus 180 and that's zero so that indicates no roots so here in segment seven we have no roots so first notice that the poles and zeros I placed are completely random. You can repeat the same process for different arrangements of poles and zeros. You can have poles only, you can have zeros only. Repeat the same thing. You will notice that this is what you're going to have uh, as a result. The first segment which is starting from the first pole or zero here to the right you have no roots the second segment roots third no roots four roots uh, fifth no roots on off on off on off okay so the roots here in segment two are to the left of one pole in S3, we don't have any roots. S4 are to the left of two poles and one zero. P1 plus P2 plus zero, one. S5, no roots. S6, we have P1, P2, zero, one. P3, zero, two. P1, P2, um, 0, 1, P3, 0, 2. And for test point 7, we have no roots. So, in this segment, we have roots, and the roots are to the left of P1. In segment 4, we have roots, and these roots are to the left of P1, P2, Z1, which are three points. In segment 6, we have roots, and these roots are to the left of P1, P2, Z1, P3, Z2, these are five points. So here we have one point, three points, five points. So the roots are to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros. Odd number of poles and zeros, regardless. Count the poles and zeros. You have odd number of poles, and zeros then you have roots when you have even number no roots odd number roots let's let me clean this up and do it uh, show an example here 
So rule number two says the root locus includes all points on the real axis to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros of GH. So let's place again random poles and zeros. Zero pole, zero, zero pole, and a pole. Uh, then I'll start on the real axis and move to the left. To the right of my hand, I have no poles, no zeros. And then at this point, I have one zero. That's an odd number. So I will have roots. Continue moving. And then when I get to this point, I have a pole and a zero. That's two, regardless whether a pole or a zero. The points are two. So the two is an even number, so no roots. And then continue moving to this point. I have two poles and a zero, two zeros and a pole. That's one, two, three. That's an odd number. So that means we will have root locus. We will have roots. Until this point, I have one, two, three, four, even, no roots. Move, then beyond this pole, we have one, two, three, four, five poles and zeros. So we have roots. And at this point, I have one, two, three, four, five, six to the right. That's an even number, so we have no roots. So basically, you start at the very right, the, uh, to the right of the first pole or zero, you will have no roots, roots, no roots, roots, no roots, and so on. You alternate. So the starting segment, the first segment to the right of everything, has no roots, and then alternates on, off, on, off, depending on the number of poles and zeros that you have. And that concludes the second rule, which is the real axis segments. Uh, one final note here is what if we have poles or zeros other than those on the real axis? For example, let me have a system with one pole here and maybe two zeros, complex zeros here. Real imaginary. Now, according to this rule, let me ignore the of the real axis zeros. According to this rule, I will have no roots because we don't have any poles or zeros. Until I get to this point, I have a pole. That means I have roots and that continues to negative infinity. But what is the effect of these two zeros? Okay. Let me put a test point here and see if that changes anything. If this is my test point, S, P1, 0, 1, 0, 2, and let me apply the angle criteria, the sum of angles of zeros minus the sum of angles of poles must be 180 degrees. So let me start with the zeros. The angle from 0, 1 to pole 1 uh, to the test point, let me call that angle alpha, sorry, alpha infinity. So that's alpha, and from 0 to 2. S, the test point, let me call this beta. Minus the angle from pole one to the test point, that's a vector to the left, that's 180 degrees. Equals, now notice that because the zeros are, or any, 
whether zeros or poles, they are arranged symmetrically around the real axis. These are complex numbers, so they're plus minus, so that the location is symmetric. And notice that because of symmetry, this angle beta is the same as this angle beta. That means alpha plus beta is 360. It's always 360, regardless where you place them, because they are symmetric. The angle beta is the complement of angle alpha. So alpha plus beta, this is equal to zero, always. For off the real axis, uh, poles or zeros. So that makes this minus 180 equals minus 180, and that's equal to 180. So nothing changes. So poles or zeros of the real axis do not interfere with rule number two. So when we consider rule number two, we completely ignore the existence of poles and zeros of the real axis and apply rule two. They will not affect the, even if we place two poles here, the angle from pole two to this point S, this angle is theta, the angle from pole three to this point S, that will be uh, angle phi, for example, phi and theta, that's phi because of symmetry, so phi plus theta is 360, so they cancel each other, again, they do not affect the rule number two, as if they do not exist. So, of three axis poles and zeros, are not considered when applying rule number two. And rule number two, roots are to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros, regardless whether they are poles or zeros. Just count the points. When you have an odd number, that means you have roots, even number, no roots, and so on. Usually, you start from no roots, roots, no roots, roots, and uh, to the end of the real axis.